So today I'm going to show you guys string builders and how we can use them in C for when we are doing some very heavy string processing. So let's say I've got a database here, right, where I've got a bunch of fields and records. So I've got the fields name, age, balance and debt. And then I have a bunch of users here like John, Richard, William, James, Michael, and all have different ages, balances and debt. They all do this, let's say bank. Let's assume that I want to write some kind of function which will take in our current user and then create a SQL query to update their balance or debt. But we have to do some checks first to make sure that that transaction is valid. So how would we do that? Well, if you guys aren't familiar with SQL, this will be a very simple instruction to it. So we want a function here called create update SQL query. It will take an array of records and an array of new values. So what I can do here is let's say I'm going to create I'm going to allocate a query string where I'm going to hold the actual SQL query I'm building. So then I'll copy the line update user bank info set. So this is just saying that in this database, so use in this table rather user bank info, I want you to search for the user with name and age. So here you got values at zero and values at one. That refers to name and age. So we're just checking if this user, let's say John, age 21, actually exists in the table first before we try to update a value there. Then we can do some more conditional stuff. So let's say we have to check if this loan is valid. So if the user is trying to get a loan, we have to update their debt. However, we might not want to get let that loan go through if their balance and debt are in a specific ratio. So here we've got another check. And then if those two checks are valid, we can then update the query string with that little string there alone and then we just pass in that new debt right so what's happening here, here is that we're constructing a string but also doing conditional checks along with it so we have to slowly add little strings onto this other string right so glibc provides us with a okayish string api so we can use string copy and string uh, str cat but the problem is all these strings are null terminated and when you're doing a lot of heavy string processing, it's very easy to mess it up and then these no terminated strings can cause some unexpected behavior because you might have forgot to put it in somewhere or you might have put it somewhere where you did not expect it to be. So how can we do this with length based strings, right? So with our current knowledge from the last video, I showed you guys how length based strings work and what we do is something like create a query string as an initial one and then we can append those new strings onto this query string. So here you can say I got a query string and I'm doing string literal of loan. What that's doing is it's taking our query string and then it's taking the loan string that we passed in and then it's allocating space for a new string which is going to be able to contain both those strings together. Then we just copy in the string there. Right now this seems fine but if you're doing a lot of heavy string processing copying the new copying these two strings into and allocating new strings all the time can actually bog up performance because we're always allocating new memory for the string, right? So if you're using something like an arena as the allocator, this won't really be much of a problem because all you're doing with the arena to allocate is just moving an offset or rather just a pointer forward in that array, which already allocated. If you're using something like malloc or a general heap allocator, then this might be a lot slower because you have to allocate a new string on the heap every single time you want to append to the string and you have to copy the values in. So it's probably not performant and this API is not really nice to work with because you have to update the query string every single time you want to change it, right? So it's not nice to it's not really nice to work with that much. So how can we change this, right? So what's the alternative we have? We can use something called a string builder. Now string builder is very simple. It's got three members in the structure. We've got a buffer where we store the string itself. We have an index into the buffer, which is what's the current offset into the buffer where we're storing characters. And then we've got the third member, which is the len. That's the maximum size of the buffer. So let's say I've got a buffer, which is 100 elements. That's the maximum size of it. And I can have an index of like 5 or 10, which tells me how many elements I'm currently storing inside of that buffer. And then as I try to append elements, I just move that index forward and then just copy that memory into that buffer. Or rather, just copy that the characters in the original string into that buffer. So let's see how this works. So if I bring back the example I had before, let's say I've got this buffer right here this is my index offset so instead of using the string query string we're going to replace it with a query string builder and I'm going to pass in a max size that's just going to allocate the buffer for me and set the len attribute to be max size right so let's say I want to append the string update onto this query string so 
down here I've got a little array which is going to represent the buffer and then I've got the index which shows the current offset into the buffer so if I try to append the update string onto the query string builder all it will do is just move index 6 to the right let's update it add 6 to it and then we just copy in that update string right there and let's say I want to add another string like user bank info then I just move forward the index and then I copy in the values I don't have enough space to show you guys with the string so just compressed it right there now if I rewrite the function I had before with this new string builder API then you can see the code's a lot cleaner so we can just pass in the string builder and the string you want to use and it will just move the index pointer or the index offset and just copy the string into that place right so that's very nice and then at the end once I'm finished making the string I can use this function string builder to string what this will just do is just take in my buffer and then it can just copy it or just return the buffer itself if, I, if I'm not changing anymore and then just return as a length based string and we can also just turn it into a, uh, a null terminator string if we wanted to so just allocate a new buffer for the null terminator string we just add a null terminator at the end so as you can see it's a very versatile tool and it makes this process of constructing complex strings very easy because this API is just a lot nicer to work with so I'll show you guys how we so here I've got the code from the last tutorial I'm just going to start adding some code for the actual string builder structure itself so here I've got a struct called string builder and it's going to have those three members I talked to you about before so you have the child pointer which is the buffer you have a unit 64t which is going to be our index and then we have the maximum size of the buffer which is len and whenever we're appending stuff to this string builder we also have to check if the size of the string we're trying to append plus the index is less than our total length and that prevents us from overflowing or rather accessing memory which is out of bounds of the buffer so I'm just gonna make all this line up so let's say the first function I want to write is the string builder in it what's that going to do It's going to just take in an arena where we're going to store the actual buffer then it's going to take in the actual string builder itself and then it's going to take in a max size right so I'm using arenas for this string builder so the way it works is that we're going to push that buffer onto the arena so that way whenever we're trying to you can use it you can just very easily free the memory afterwards once we're finished using it you can also use malloc if you want to allocate the string or any other allocator you want but I think arenas work really nicely here because they it just makes freeing the whole string a lot easier. Although it's not much of an issue right now because all you have to do is just free the buffer because we're just appending all those strings onto that buffer, right? So how would we initialize this string builder? We just dereference it and just initialize all the values right here. So say buffer is equal to push string arena max size then I have dot index but it's going to be set to zero initially right and then dot len is equal to max size so if you guys are wondering what this push string macro is I will just quickly show you guys so in this arena header file I just separated the code for the arena's implementation and the actual interface into this header and source file as you can see I've got a bunch of these macros right here so I've got push array align push push array push string push struct and these are all just wrappers around the arena alloc function and this just kind of helps me mentally think about how I want to treat this allocation so this will be equivalent to me just doing arena alloc arena right I say number of elements is going to be max size size of char and then a line of char that macro does the exact same the exact same thing as this little line here but I just find it to be a little bit easier to work with so the next thing I want to do is create a function to append to the arena It's going to not to the arena to the string builder rather so it's going to return a boolean because either a we successfully pushed that string onto the string builder or b we can't push it in because maybe the string is too large and it can't fit on the buffer or maybe if we try to push it on it'll be an overflow there so we can just return a boolean in those cases telling us if we succeeded or not so I'll pass in a string builder, then the other string I want to append, right? So I could do a check here if the string builder's index plus the append string, which is the string we're trying to add into the arena, if these two, the combined size, is greater than the actual length 
of the string builder, then we just return false because we can't do that allocation. The string's too large. So we can then, if it is valid, we just then copy those characters from a pen string onto our string builder. So we just do builder buffer plus builder index. That's the current offset we have. So we're going to start pushing from there. And we're copying from there. And we do string builder string, and then append string dot len. That's how many bytes we're going to copy. So just copying this append string onto the end of the string builder and then I just update the index by the amount we just pushed on so there we go that turned true right so let's say I just want to try test this out it's going to remove all these strings here say so string builder, string builder. I'll say let's say 20 kilobytes with the string builder. That's a lot of memory, but it should work fine. That's a bit weird. I'm not sure why that's happening, it doesn't really make sense. Oh, okay, I accidentally... I forgot to add in it there, so... The function name was wrong, so it was matching the struct. So now if you run it, it seems to work fine. So let's append a string onto the arena. I mean, append a string onto the string builder. So pass in the string builder. Okay, it didn't crash. So now that we've pushed this string onto the string builder, how can we actually print it out, right? So we have to turn it back into a C string. So I'm going to write two functions for this. So the first one's going to be to turn it into a length based string, which is actually pretty easy. So all we have to do is just return the buffer and the count, I mean the index. So we can just do just pass in the string builder and just return a string. Right, because the index is the current element, or the current offset we are at, so the, the maximum size of the string so far. So that's just that's to get a length based string out of it. Now, if you want to do, if you want to get a no terminator string, we just do string builder to c string. Pass in the string builder, then we just pass an arena as well, because you have to allocate a new string for it. So if the builder's index, oops, so that should be string copy is equal to push string arena. Just going to be the size. Then we have to add one to account for the null terminator. I forgot to do that in the last video. So we can then do this. Then we just return the string, right? I think that should work fine. So then if I do a printer
There we go, let's print that hello world. Then if I do another string append, let's say. That should print out. There we go. So we're just appending stuff to the string and it's updating it as well. So I'm going to create another. So here I'm just going to. Here I'm returning the actual buffer itself. But if I want to create another function just to create a copy on Arena, I can also do that. But that'll just be pretty much the same as this. But I can remove the plus one because we'd have to account for the null terminator. And I just do string copy. And then builder.index. Right. That's just going to allocate a new length based string on the arena and then just return that. And this just returns the actual buffer itself as a length, as a length based string. So I'm going to create one more function which is going to be called string builder remove. And all this will take is a string builder and then a unit 64t which is the number of characters when I remove from the string builder, right? So what I can do here is let's say I have to first check if the The length, the amount of characters I want to remove is actually valid. So, if my current index is five and I try to remove twenty elements, then I can't actually do that. That's invalid, right? So in that case, I just return false. Otherwise, I would just all I have to do is actually just move the index backwards because I don't actually have to mem set anything to zero or do anything like that. Because if I just move the index to zero, whenever I try to print out the C string or access the actual string. It's just going to stop at that length so we can just it's very simple we just have to move the index backwards just to remove elements that's also really fast so if i do something like currently that's going to be hello world another string if i do string border remove let's say 10 characters well let's, actually let's do five instead just to see There we go, I moved 10, 5 characters there. If I try to remove more characters than there are on the string, so let's say I do move 100 characters, then that's a bit strange. Oh, okay. So it seems to be happening, so we've got an overflow right here. We're going to try to remove, try to minus these two unit 64s. So we can do here is let's say int 64t remaining size is builder index minus remove len right and then i just comment that this out quickly I'll kill minus 74 then what we can do here is so doing that we just do the meaning size right we run it again there we go it won't remove that element or well, they won't remove that element anymore because it's too it's the, the actual the amount of we're trying to remove is too large actually I realize we can make this even better if you just to if remove len is greater than builder index then you can't actually do that right so that's even better way to do it there we go so yeah that's pretty much it for the string builder you can add a lot of stuff if you want to like removing the ranges in between i'll leave that as an exercise for you guys but as you can see it's really simple and it's, it's very it's quite useful as well especially when we're trying to construct very complex strings because it just simplifies the whole process down and it's also very fast because we've pre-allocated the buffer where we're going to store the string and we're just moving the offset back and forth to be able to add or remove elements from it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I made some videos before about length based strings and arenas. So if some of the terminology I'm using here like an arena allocator and a length based string they aren't making sense to you, I'd highly recommend that you watch those, video, those videos first or after this one. And um, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.